Stocks continuing the October sell-off. When will it end? Fox Business's Susan Lee has the latest. Susan. Okay, hard to say, but I can tell you that October has tr traditionally been a tough, tough month, and it's been a long, long week of volatile trade. So the Dow is now on track for the worst month in eight years, while the technology-heavy Nasdaq index looking at its worst month since the global financial crisis all the way back in 2008. Now, the big drags have been the big Silicon Valley names like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Alphabet, and Netflix. These are the same ones, though, that have also been leading the markets up to these record levels this year. Concerns over higher interest rates, global trade tensions, and fears that corporate earnings might be peaking have sparked this current sell-off. Now, this week, disappointing earnings from Amazon and Google's parent Alphabet seem to confirm the negative market sentiments. But let's keep things in perspective. You know, we're still in the midst of the longest bull market run in history, and you've done pretty well from the depths of the global financial crisis with the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ up astoundingly since that time. Take a look at the NASDAQ. We're up over 400%. And by the way, we still have a strong U.S. economy, expanding 3.5% from the June to September period. Less than the second quarter, yes, but still better than economists forecast and really puts the U.S. economy on track for the best year of growth since 2005. That's 13 years. Consumer spending, the bright spot, very important as well as it powers two-thirds of the U.S. economy. Americans are spending spending at the fastest rate in nearly four years, thanks to lower taxes and, of course, that great jobs market, the best in close to 50 years. Government spending, including defense, also powering economic growth as well. But the main drag, housing. That's a big concern. Falling in the quarter because of higher interest rates and tax code changes. Housing important to the U.S. as it accounts for nearly a fifth of the U.S. economy. Charles? All right. So what exactly is going on here? Susan's going to join us along with Fox News contributor Jonas Max Ferris and Stock Swoosh founder Melissa Arma. All right, Melissa, uh, what's going on? Because every day was Halloween this, uh, this October, well, at least for it, investors. It was definitely been a disappointing month and particularly this past week because we were talking about this earlier in the week. Google and Amazon, expectations were that they would gap up and rally on the earnings, and they fell. But I have to be honest with you, they didn't fall as much as they could have fallen, and they actually held pretty good into the close on Friday. This is another big week. Apple reports this week. If Apple bombs too, that isn't going to be good for the market going into the midterms. You know, it's so funny, Jonas, when a company says, one company says we're going to do $72 billion in revenue in this three months. The other one says, yeah, we got $106 billion in the bank, and they both get hit. Uh, but again, Susan points out that the, this market has come a long way. No stocks have come either further. Okay, Apple hasn't bombed since the Newton came out, so it's been a long... I don't I'm optimistic. Get, I'm not saying I'm going to bomb. Get I'm very optimistic. I, I do think <laughs> investors, you know, it's been a long party. Look at those numbers we were just looking at. I think investors are looking a little too hard for signs the party's over. And I think the primary focus has been interest rates. They went up a little too fast. When, they, when you got to about 3 and a quarter percent on the 10-year, which sent mortgage rates up for a 30-year up to about 5% for consumers, that's a high rate given how high home prices are in many parts of the country. And you're seeing some weakness now in real estate. So investors are scared. Is this is this the end? Is this, is this going to go to 4%? Are we going to see 7% mortgage rates? Then when that settled down and rates started to dip back down, the market kind of generated back up and then back down and back up. So that's the primary focus. The, and it kind of like the chaser on the whole panic is top line revenue growth at tech companies. Not so much the profits. Everyone knows those are super great. Right now, things look so great. It's like 2000 or 1929. But what are they going to keep growing? Is there something? Is it? Is it all a lot of engineers, a lot of venture capital, a lot of borrowing? And that's where the focus well, is right now. Well, psyches and mentality, I think, affects trading more than economics does. Uh, Jamie Dynamon has said that over and over again, and I would agree because people forget that there is still an intact growth story in the U.S., right? Look at the GDP numbers, pretty much confirming that. And when Amazon makes record profit in the quarter, they get hit because they're not forecasting as much as what analysts had anticipated. Don't you think that's an overshoot of expectations more than actual fundamentals at well, this I, point? Uh, I, I think short-term sentiment drives markets long-term fundamentals would dictate where markets and stocks probably ultimately go. To your point, uh, if it's it's great news, listen, buy the dip has been a great, the greatest money-making uh, tool for any investor over the last nine years. So is this one of those periods, perhaps, Melissa? Based on what you just said, the, the fundamentals are fantastic. The emotions aren't. Take advantage of the emotions. Listen, I'm bullish on the market. I don't think the emotions are necessarily negative right now because you wouldn't see consumer spending up if I'm that I'm talking was the investor, case. not consumer or business, but the investor. I 
cancers and, that, that right. create these swoons where we go down 600 points in one because session. Because I think that may be worried that if the Democrats win, you know, the House, then possibly some of these things that ha that Trump has put into place, his policies, could be overturned or changed. And, and I don't think that would be good for the market. The market is going to react, I think, very positively if the Republicans keep, keep both uh, the House and the Senate in Congress. But that being said, the capital gains tax right now is low under Trump. So if that would change, if they overturn that, then that again would create people going into 2019 and saying, listen, the market's been up. We want to take profits. We're going to pay a lower rate under right. Trump because they might bump it up. But nobody but wants to be stuck with the hot potato at the end. No one wants to be stuck without a chair. And when you're in the longest bull market run, we're in the 10th year of expansion. That's probably the longest on record. People are thinking, when does the music end? Does it end soon? And they're probably looking for any excuse to take money off. Of yeah, I don't think it ends. I don't think it ends anytime soon. And so, Janice's no, point, I think Apple I mean, could report well this week. I mean, that would be great for the market going into the Tuesday elections, Jones. too. You know, there's, you can't dismiss just pure cra cra insanity, essentially. But look, there's irrational exuberance sometimes, and there's irrational pessimism. And people are told right or wrong that October is a volatile month. And it is, and it's been crashes in the past. That should have no bearing whatsoever on your behavior, but it does. I mean, the bottom line is you're like, oh, this is a crash This month. is a sort of self-fulfilling kind of and, event. And you're like, wow, things are getting rocky. This is in October. And that doesn't make any sense but that's how people behave, just as the uh, and the Fed isn't actually. helping with that. They're, it's like every time the Fed comes out and says a statement, it's like they're trying to choke the life out of the growth in the I economy. They're raising that, rates that too I, fast. I blame most of October on October 3rd. Jay Powell said something that scared the heck out of big money. Uh, about not being able to tell when the top was for interest rate hikes, where neutral was, because most investors know or agree that the recessions, the last 11 recessions maybe, were caused by the Fed yeah. overreacting to a good economy. Well, there, you know, history has said that the Fed has put an end to the party, but I think with the strong rhetoric coming out of the White House, I still think they're going to go in December because you have to, otherwise you look like you're countdowing sure, sure. to the presidency. But do they do they raise interest rates three times next year as a dot plot? That's a Federal Reserve speak for how many interest rates they have priced in for the next year. I'm not sure they're going to do that. I'm not, Jonas, I'm not sure think, they're going to be that You think this handed. impacts the midterms, or you think maybe this is because of the anxiety over who wins the midterms? Some I, of it. I, I, get, I think the primary thing is interest rates and, and tech growth. However, the, the, it's a little related to midterms because there is an underlying fee that with raising rates going on, this government debt is now an issue again. And the interest rate payments are going up. And what we're seeing from both sides is their reelection plans are both plans to make the deficit worse. You're either getting let's do more tax cuts or let's do Medicare for all. Let's do basic income for everybody. Those are plans yeah, that well. on top of what's going on now is not going to work with high interest Memo to everyone, pox on both houses. <laughs> <laughs> Until either one learns how to stop spending money, yeah, that's going to be a ticking time bomb. Thank you all very much. While the markets try to work their way back up, the care